Righto, so I made it back home from my epic two month road trip around New Zealand and I had such an awesome time guys. Um, even though New Zealand was fairly similar to Australia, I didn't expect as many problems compared to other countries. But with that said, there is still a few things I wish I knew before I went over there. So that's why I'm here today. I'm here to give you eight tips before you travel over to New Zealand. So let's jump right into it, guys. Woo! All right, before I jump into the tips, I just wanted to show you guys my awesome bottle that I picked up at the Auckland airport. It's like a tiki liqueur bottle and it tastes delicious. It's pretty cool, eh? <laughs> Alright, so the first tip when traveling to New Zealand is should you get a SIM card or should you just stick to the Wi-Fi? It all depends on how long you're staying for, I reckon. Because if you're thinking about getting a SIM card, oh, you might want to be staying longer than a month. But if you do choose to just stick with Wi-Fi, then you'll be able to get by, but because you can get Wi-Fi in say cafes, restaurants, your hostels, and there is also Wi-Fi spots like around the big cities. But that said, if you go outside of the city into sort of unpopulated areas, it'll be really hard to find Wi-Fi and connection. But if you do choose the option to get a SIM card, well, then you're in luck because I know the three best SIM cards you should get. There's Vodafone, Spark, and Two Degrees. Um, the one I got was with Spark. Uh, it was a mobile data plan called Skinny. So that is probably the best one I would recommend. And you get like a really good data plan and unlimited calls and texts to Australia and New Zealand. And throughout all of New Zealand, it is, I found it to be fairly good service. So it's all up to your guys' decision to choose Wi-Fi or to just stick with a SIM card. Tip number two, you guys need to download these apps. I love apps. I don't think I could live without my travel apps. Like it just makes my life so, so much easier. There's an app for everything these days. And specifically for New Zealand, there is some great apps out there. And I recommend my number one app for New Zealand, CamperMate. Download CamperMate now. Just do it. Just, I'll wait for this. Just, just download it now. I'll wait. All right. So now that you got it. <laughs> All right. CamperMate is such a great app. So CamperMate is for New Zealand and Australia and it finds a lot of things. Like it finds pretty much every single camper site around New Zealand, free and paid, which is really good to find the free ones. And it also finds like toilets, showers, ATMs, like hikes. It finds heaps of other things, but I use that app every single day and I pretty much couldn't travel without that one. Okay, so app number two is bookme.nz. This app is really great for finding like good deals. I used it a couple times. So every time you go to a certain place, uh, you just put in that city or town and you can find a specific deal in that area. Um, and like sometimes you can get like up to 50, 60, 70% off. Like even if you go bungee jumping, I've seen them for 50% off. Or I saw one jet boat ride, it was like $20. Not even that, $1. Yeah, that's right, you can get special $1 deals. It is very hard to get those though. All right, and app number three is, a look. What is it, what is it, what is it? Uh, well, that's right, it is the Lime S, Lime S app. So Lime S is the scooters that they have in the major big city. So I found them in Christchurch, Auckland, and Dunedin, I think. So the Lime S scooters are really cool though, and it is such an easy way to get around the big cities. Um, all you have to do is download that app, and then you can find a scooter in your area, and then you scan the barcode on the scooter, and it costs $1, 
to first get it, then it's like 30 cents every minute. But, and they get up to like 30 kilometers an hour. There was <laughs> so much fun. Just, you have, you have to go on one day. That's, it's just such a fun experience. And my last useful app, and this one is for only if you're traveling by car and you pay by fuel, is Gatsby. Because you'll probably notice when you get there, but fuel is very, very expensive in New Zealand. Well, much more expensive than Australia. And for some reason, unleaded, way more expensive than diesel. So average price for unleaded is like $2.00 seven cents um, so you'll always want to find the cheapest fuel prices and by doing that download Gatsby and you'll find it tip number three where should you shop all right so there is three main big shopping centers uh, in New Zealand to find the cheapest food drinks whatever and these three are pack and save new world and countdown and also, if you've been to Australia, Countdown is exactly like Woolworths. They've just changed the name for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but And when you buy something in one of these shops, always ask for a discount card. So when I was over there, um, I got like a New World discount card and a discount card for Countdown. So with these, you'll always save some cash. Tip number four. Beware of the sand flies. This is actually a really, really important tip. Um, I really wish I knew this before I went over there because I got absolutely smashed by sand flies. Like, I think I had sand fly bites on my legs for probably a month. Like, I even got the scarring from some sand, sand fly bites now. And it's been like over two, three months since I've been there. Um, but yeah. Beware of the sand flies guys, you'll most likely see them in South Island, they're more common around there, and especially if you're camping like near rivers or something. Um, but I recommend just, when the first time you go to the shops, buy some repellent. And don't, don't cheap out on the cheap repellent because I did that and it didn't work. Um, buy the Bushman's, Bushman's repellent, because uh, that, that works the best and just every day spray it on you. Even if you think they're not gonna be around, just spray it on you. But if you do happen to get smashed by those goddamn sand flies, find some good cream to get rid of the bites because trust me, it takes a long, long time for them to heal. Ah, oh, I hate them. <laughs> Number five. All right, weather. What is the weather gonna be like in New Zealand? Well, I guess it all depends on the time you go there. Um, but when I went there at the start of the year, it was summertime and I made a mistake by not bringing any sort of winter gear and it was cold. I, I did, did not realize it was gonna be cold, but it was still cold in peak summertime. This is literally the only um, winter gear that I have because I was like, nah, it'll be warm. but. It's not warm, it's cold. So oh, whenever you go, always just bring some sort of long sleeve clothing, or some jumpers or whatever. Um, and also, like the weather can be very unpredictable in a lot of spots, uh, especially South Island. So South Island weather is probably the worst. North Island, you always sort of have pretty nice weather up there. But South Island, it just, it rains a lot. It has just been pouring down rain ever since we got here and it does not look like it's gonna stop. Like, the further I got south, it just rained a majority of the weeks. Uh, and it, like, I think in Milford Sound, it rains 182 days of the year there. So it is always important to bring a rain jacket as well. And another good reason for that is because it will block the wind and it is super windy in New Zealand, you'll notice every day it's just windy like I, I don't even remember how many days i didn't have wind so yeah just take that into mind guys even though if it's a hot day it could be freezing because it'll be just blowing wind down from the cold uh, from the cold mountains another thing to take into mind too is when it does get hot you'll probably get burnt fairly easy so New Zealand is like Australia. 
we're both closer to the ozone layer. And if you're from like the UK or anywhere else around the world, you're gonna have to just lather yourself up with that sunscreen. Otherwise, you will get burnt. Oh, I got pretty burnt when I was there. And another thing to think of is the earthquakes. I don't want to scare you guys, but there is quite frequent earthquakes in some places of New Zealand, especially Christchurch. Like in 2011, I think it was then, um, yeah, they had a horrible earthquake that, and everyone in the whole town had to evacuate for like two years. And within that two years, they had like, like 3,000 aftershocks, which is just crazy. But a lot of these earthquakes aren't life-threatening. They're just just a little shake, I'm guessing. Um, I've never really experienced one myself. But just put that into mind. And yeah, as I said, Christchurch is probably the most common place you'll get earthquakes. So just, just don't freak out about that. Tip number six. Strict drone laws. If you're someone that owns a drone and you think you can just fly it wherever you want in New Zealand, think again because I was exactly the same and they are very, very strict on their drone laws over there. Uh, so pretty much everywhere I went to like do a hike around New Zealand, before the hiking track, you'll most likely see a sign that just says no drones or have a picture of a drone and big cross through it. And I think majority of the places like this is, I, they act like a hiking track is sort of a national park and they want to keep peace and quiet. And also a lot of areas too, they just have a lot of helicopter tours. So I, that's understandable. They don't want drones flying around when there's helicopters everywhere as well. But yeah, and if there is, if you do see a sign that says no drones, don't risk it because you'll get a hefty fine. I've read one sign says if you get caught, they'll confiscate your drone and they'll fine you like 7,500 New Zealand dollars. So I wouldn't take that risk. And if you are, good luck. Tip number seven, booking activities. As you'll see when you get to New Zealand, they have a lot of cool activities like just some crazy adrenaline junkie activities. That's why I love visiting there. And you will save a lot of money if you book um, certain activities together. So meaning, what I mean by that is when I did my never spongy jump, which was crazy. I booked the never spongy and the, what is it? And the canyon swing together. So I saved like a hundred dollars um, just because I booked those two together. And then I didn't realize I was gonna do it when I got there, but after I did the canyon swing, they're like, oh, do you wanna do the catapult for like 75 bucks, which pretty much saves me like another hundred dollars. And I was like, yeah, well, while I'm here, may as well do it. So if you're ever doing activities and if you're booking them at certain places, see if you can um, book a few together, like as a bundle and make it as a cheaper price. And for my last tip, number eight, hiking. I have never hiked so much in my life until I went to New Zealand. It, like every, pretty much every day, I think I hiked somewhere or did some sort of hiking. We finally made it to the top of Roy's Peak. Made it to the top of Pinnacle's Peak. This place is just like a huge maze. Where the hell am I going? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is like the steepest bit. There is so, so much hiking to do there, guys. And I recommend before going onto any hiking track, always check the weather, make sure you have the right gear, like, oh, I wouldn't say proper hiking boots, but in closed shoes at least. Um, rain jacket, sort of jumper if it gets cold in certain areas. So some hiking tracks are a lot more difficult than others. I think. The one that I suffered the most was the Tongariro crossing. So I think I underestimated how cold this track could get. So start of the track has started cold, then it went hot, then it's cold, now it's freezing. Um, like it didn't seem like a bad track at start, but when I got to like the top of the mountain, 
it just was blowing so hard and I was freezing. I was just shivering so much. And then like 10 minutes later, it was like hot. So the, the weather changes, as I said before, like every day, every hour. But yeah, when hiking, make sure you're well equipped with your gear and just enjoy the scenery and tracks guys because it is beautiful. Well, there you have it guys. That is my eight tips you should all know before you travel to New Zealand. And I assure you that if you follow each and every single one of these tips, you will have an amazing, amazing trip. Like even though I encountered these few things along the way, I still had such a great time in New Zealand. It was the best road trip I've ever had. And I will look back on that trip for the rest of my life. But with that said, I've got more travel updates and I've got a lot more plans ahead of me. So once I post this video, I'll probably be in Japan. I'm gonna be traveling over Japan for one month and then after that, I'm flying over to Bali, Indonesia, where I'm gonna start my just big Asia trip. I'm just gonna be going everywhere, guys, everywhere around Asia. So I look forward to that because I am getting keen. And remember, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, follow your dreams, escape your comfort zone, and I will be seeing you in Japan. Boop.